Hello everyone, this is Dana Reynolds with Master Cut Gems. We are in my little uh, hideaway dungeon down here where I polish swords and cut a few gemstones and uh, I'm just uh, going to explain to y'all basically the stones that I use and, and just a beginning of what I work with and the blades that I acquire. Uh, first we're going to go over here and we're going to look at the stones. Uh, this is an array of stones uh, from basically foundation work all the way up to uh, bringing out the hamen in the blade. Uh, this first stone right here, that is a Bensui Do. That stone right there is basically your foundation stone if you do not have too much deep rust. The second stone, these are natural. Uh, the second stone is a Kaisi Do. Uh, it removes the scratches from the Bensui dough. Uh, the third stone is a Chunagura. This is a natural stone. This is a natural, and that is a synthetic. The fourth stone is the Komanagura. This is a synthetic stone, as well as that one. It's a synthetic stone. This one is a natural Komanagura. Uh, I've had this in 12 or 13 years, and they're very, very hard to come by now. Um, they just de deplete the mines, and they're just, you know, there's a finite amount of this material. Uh, this stone is your Uchimagora series. This is a Jito down here, the dark one. Basic Uchimagora and a Sutado here for doing more modern or show a period blaze because it's a little harder. This stone right here is. Uh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a 200 grit. It's, it's for removing heavy rust and deep pits. Uh, these are my shaping stones that I shape my, my bigger stones with to dress them down. Uh, of course your water, and this is basically a cobbler's type bench that my dad made for me. I got tired of the traditional. Um, I work on the farm and sometimes I just do not feel like getting into the squat position. Um, this is your copa. This is, this is the uh, material that you use to make your finger stones. Your, this is basically Uchimagora. This is your hato. This is for your jitto. You know, this, this is a uh, narataki copa. Um, you got various different hardnesses of this material. Uh, this is with those that I have chiseled with the hammer. It's a sedimentary rock. So it, it breaks down the seams, and then you'll go from there to thin it down. This is already broke out from other copa. Uh, this is your rice paper that you use to back with. I normally use goop. I have used utsuri a lot, but I do like working with the goop a little better. It's more of a rubber-based uh, adhesive. Works good and gives a little cushion to your finger stones. Um, over there in that box is a bunch of the, the copa of different hardnesses. Uh, of course, some of my old traditional things down there that I used to work with. More stones. You never have enough stones. Uh, and then over there is my fittings. I've got all my um, fuchis and kashiras, manuki and subas that I have acquired over the years. Uh, here is your uh, nagui kit here with your different types of nagui for bringing out the grains and the darkness in the steel for different eras or different hardnesses of uh, steels. Um, basically these are sorted out finger stones, your hato and your jitto uh, for different hardnesses and then I, when I'm making it up I make up a bunch um, just let you know that you know you just this is one that I have backed and I haven't thinned down to the thickness that I want yet but it will be worked out on the diamond and wet um, basically over here you got your Asundria Seppa and you've got your Habakis that came off of these blades and some of the old sayas and stuff uh, a lot of those will not be used but they were just sent to uh, protect the blade and shipping um, then we'll go over here. This is the basically uh, some of the blades that I have that are in polish or going to be started into polish. Um, these right here are the ones that I just recently got. Uh, Mike Yamaguchi, I buy from him. Uh, he's in California. And he has basically all various grades from things that 
you would have to completely redo, uh, retemper, and everything all the way to very, very, very fine blades. Um, which you can see some of these. This right here, I just started this one for presentation to show. This one here um, is a short wakasashi, uh, very bad rust. Um, as you can see, this is what it looked like before I ever started. And this is just your first pass with, say, a 240 grit to remove the rust. And then after I do that, I will dip them in a very low acidic apple cider vinegar just to pick up the hominin, the differential uh, hardness in the blade. And that way I can check for Hagiri, make sure Haman's intact, there's no fatal flaws in the blade to go any further because if they're fatal, I'm, you know, I really just, you know, I set them to the side. Um, various stages of polish, you know, some of them have not even been touched. Uh, here's a tuna knife. This one right here is a tuna knife which it does not have hominin, uh, but it is hardened, but it, uh, it, it's made to be resharpened and it's not going into battle. Tuna's already dead, so. Um, there's very old blades here from say the 1500s on up to uh, Showa two period blade. That katana back there is a Showa period. It's a water quench blade, uh, Ganomi Haman. The one below it this one here has a very unusual, nice hominin. Uh, that's just a first pass uh, with the Uchimagora. Uh, you can see some of them have very good temper lines, very unusual and uh, intricate hominin. Um, there's an old pole blade right there that someone had brought back from World War II and um, mutilated the Nakago, but that's just, that's okay. I've already made a Habaki for it and custom made it. It will be more like a, I guess, like a long Tonto now. Um, and then, of course, there's a one old Yari back there. I've done them, pretty much all of them. Um, Jumanji Yari is probably the hardest thing that you'll ever fool with, and it's just too, too detailed to me. I don't even bid on them anymore or anything like that. But that's basically the stages of the blades. Um, nothing is finished. Uh, no Yakote lines have been cut in. Uh, haven't made four or five passes with the Hato and four or five passes with the Jito. Hadn't burnished anything. So these right here are just basically all in polish, but in various stages from what it came out of the mail and a foundation polish. Some of the blades, if they're unusual or neat, I will do a watercolor of. That's an old Tonto that's probably 1500s, but uh, it's unique and interesting. If they're unique and interesting, sometimes I will do a watercolor of just, you know, just for, you know, the fun of it. Um, that's basically it. Uh, this is just uh, your Wakamisu water back there for doing with your finger stones. You have to make that. There's a lot of things to do uh, in this, and there's a lot of studying, a lot of reading. Um, this is a interesting craft. Uh, I enjoy it. It's um, it is laborious, and you do know need to know the fundamentals of geometry and how steel works. I did tool and die making for many years, so metallurgy and knowing angles and degrees and uh, polish degrees uh, I've studied for years this is a very interesting craft uh, I'm a minimalist I take no more than I absolutely have to uh, and if it was something that was a you know national treasure I would hand it over to a Japanese polisher I would not do it myself even though I've done good work I still feel like that something of that magnitude would need to be done by someone who studied longer than I uh, I've been doing it probably around 15 years, and you are always learning. It's just like gem cutting. It's constant learning. Uh, but I do feel like that it is a fundamental art and a craft that most people can do. And that the main thing is to keep in mind what the smith had in mind for that particular blade and to make it as functional tool as possible because they're all tools. They were all designed for a specific uh, purpose and that purpose was for battle and to cut 
So as long as you keep the Smith in mind and uh, adhere to the minimalist approach, uh, study, uh, start out with something that is not a worthy blade if you start, um, but yet will still be able to give you the effects that you would get from doing a blade that has folding, uh, Hada, uh, Harmon, and those characteristics that would make you more suitable to do this once you start working with a, a Japanese made blade. Um, we will on the next video start going through, uh, we'll take a blade, one that's in rough shape that I just got, and we will go from beginning to end, and then that way you can see how I polish a Japanese blade, and that uh, the respect you have for the steel, and as always, take no more than you absolutely have to, because um, you can't put the metal back once you have taken it away from it. So. Look forward to the next video. Thank you for watching and viewing this, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful evening, and thanks a lot. Bye-bye.